The fourth discipline in triathlon, especially long course triathlon, is nutrition. And you've probably heard people talking about bars, gels and energy drinks during their race. And you may have even heard of people talking about using their watches to tell them how many calories they've burnt during a race or a session and your nutrition itself telling you how many calories it provides. But what even is a calorie and why is it so important? As triathletes, we're often quite guilty of talking about calories and even tracking them. I mean, after a training session, you might be looking at how many you've burned and then maybe you're measuring how many you're consuming afterwards. But do we know exactly what we mean when we talk about a calorie? Well, a calorie is a unit of energy. How much energy is stored within a substance? And normally we're referring to foods here. Now, calorie is defined as the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now this is a little bit confusing because quite often when we're referring to calories, we're actually referring to kilocalories. So actually the amount of heat energy required to raise 1000 grams or one liter of water by one degree Celsius. And you probably remember this from high school, burning various food substances, popping them under a beaker of water and seeing how much they raise the temperature of that water. I mean, I remember burning things. I'm not sure I learned very much, but to put it into kind of real life context, a gel that you'll probably consume during a race is roughly around 100 calories. So in theory, if you did burn that, that would heat that one liter of water by approximately 100 degrees centigrade. And you might have also noticed if you do study the nutrition on the back of a gel or any other food, then there'll be another number or letters next to it. And that is kilojoules, which is basically just another metric, another way of measuring your energy. And one calorie is the equivalent of 4.18 kilojoules. And humans are conditioned to thinking of different food sources as having different calorie contents. For instance, cake, like we've got here, having more calories than rice cakes. And this is essentially true, but what we're really referring to is the calorie content. So one gram of carbohydrate, whether from bread, fruit, sugar, will always have four calories. One gram of protein, whether from tofu, fish, steak, will also have four calories. One gram of fat, whether from butter, avocado or oil, will have nine calories of energy. Yeah, exactly true. So when or if you're counting calories, not that we're advising you do, you need to actually take into account how much of that food you're eating as opposed to whether it has carbohydrates or in it or not. But you also need to look at the micronutrients, but that I guess is a video for another day. And we're not actually here to talk about your diet and discuss these different foods. We want to actually find out how we use calories when it comes to triathlon. For the purpose of your triathlon, you can track how many calories you're burning and how many calories you're consuming. And by carefully monitoring and balancing these, it can allow you either to maintain a good healthy weight or in fact try to lose weight by preventing you from overcompensating, overeating from the classic training induced hunger and ultimately allowing you to arrive on race day in good shape. Yeah, and obviously when it comes to race day, diet goes out the window. It's all about optimizing that performance. So how can you use calories to help you do that? Well, there are two main considerations here. How many calories you need for that optimal performance. And secondly, where that source of calories is gonna come from during the event. Yeah, you'd think it would be simple that you could just look at your watch and see how many calories you're using per hour and simply replace that. But you need to bear in mind that when you're exercising, you're going to be using anything from 500 up to 1400 calories per hour. And that's simply just not possible to replace. And when you're working harder or faster, that number's going to be at the top end. And for an example, you could look at a pro Ironman athlete and they would actually need to have the equivalent of a Big Mac and fries every hour and wow it's not really very convenient is it so the limiting factor on how many calories you can consume is actually governed by how much you can digest now most people are probably going to struggle to digest a Big Mac and fries in an hour whilst lying on the couch. So you can safely assume that you're going to struggle to do the same while cycling and running along. Obviously, everyone's different on this front. You can train the, the gut to a degree so they can absorb these calories whilst exercising. But even the strongest stomach will top out at around 400 calories per hour. And most people, probably at most around 300 calories per hour. 
Therefore, whilst you are racing, you're probably going to go into calorie depletion and therefore having to tap into your body's reserves, which is why it's so important to keep topping that up and taking as much as you can so you don't use too much of those reserves. Yeah, so let's say you can only absorb three to 400 calories and your stomach isn't really even efficient at that. How do you actually go about it? Well, thanks to science and our predecessors for plenty of trial and error when it comes to it, they've actually worked it out. And we are all different, you have to remember that. And like you said, you know, a Big Mac can't really easily be digested, although some people do claim that they can during even a marathon. But most of us think it's fair to say can't. Now then, fats need to be broken down and emulsified to be absorbed. So to be honest, they're of pretty little use when exercising. In fact, with such low blood flow to the gut whilst we exercise, fats can end up pooling in the gut and therefore causing GI distress. So rather than enhancing performance, could end up hindering performance. Proteins can be useful, particularly for ultra long endurance events, but because they do take a bit more time and energy to be digested and absorbed, they're probably of little use again for the shorter and more intense exercise. Yeah, so therefore we want our primary source to be predominantly carbohydrates. And that's why most sports sort of fueling is primarily carbohydrates. You've got your gels, you've got uh, sports drinks, energy bars, and even chews, they're all going to be coming under that bracket. And there's different types of carbohydrates. So you've got your simple sort of high sugar carbohydrates, and then you've got your more complex. And when it comes to nutrition for sport, you want to be able to digest it quickly. Therefore, you want it to be a high sugar carbohydrate because you don't want to have your stomach taking a long time to digest and potentially pooling with that low blood flow that we've already talked about. Okay, now it's time to pull out your napkin and do some maths. And let's use an example of an Ironman 70.3. Say you're planning to do a half Ironman in a time of six hours total time. Now it's gonna sound odd, but we're gonna forget about the swim because you can't physically eat and drink during the swim. And then also on the run, it's also just physically harder for your body to absorb and process as many calories. So the main focus is on the bike. And also note that you don't want to try and compensate for the lack of calories you've taken on during the swim, because as we mentioned already, there is an upper limit to how much your body and your gut can process and digest. And this has no bearing on how long that swim has taken. Yeah, so with that in mind, the target is to take on 300 calories per hour when you're on the bike. And let's say the bike's gonna take us around three hours. That means 900 calories. And depending on what gel you're using, Let's just, for simplicity's sake, say that's going to be nine gels, which you can simply put in your bento box or your pockets and drink water, and there you've got your, what you need to consume. Although, if you're someone who likes to take on energy drink, you need to do the maths here, because you obviously, if you're taking that on top of those nine gels, you're going to be going over the limit of what your stomach can digest, and you're going to likely to have stomach problems. So, roughly around 150 to 200 calories is what's going to be in a 750 ml drinks bottle, if you've made it up per the instructions. So, let's say you're going to take on two of those bottles throughout those three hours you can simply take out four gels so do those two bottles and have your five gels and you're still going to hit those 900 calories and then when it comes to the run like mark said earlier you're not going to be able to digest quite as much so let's aim for around 230 calories per hour and that will equate to roughly five gels or taking on a gel every 25 to 30 minutes for the run leg and you're simply just going to supplement that with water Of course, this is simply a back of a napkin calculation. So please do tailor this to your own event, your own time goals, your own nutrition and fueling choices, and of course your own personal ability to take on and eat and drink whilst racing. But now you know what a calorie is and how many you should have in your back pocket when going to race and how many calories you should be taking in whilst racing. So we hope you nail this fourth discipline of the triathlon. So best of luck with your next event. Yeah, hang on, hang on. There's just a couple of things though, before we finish, that you do need to be aware of. Now, obviously all of this nutrition comes with other bits of nutrition. So you need to consider what's being involved there. And obviously the amount of water you're taking on, which you're gonna find in your sports drinks. You're also then gonna have electrolytes, which you can find in your gels and sports drinks. And if you are competing somewhere hot, you're gonna to need to potentially increase both of those. And also caffeine, that's one that can sometimes be hidden or maybe it's quite clear on the label, but you just think, oh, I like those gels, keep having them. If you're not careful, you can end up having side effects of your stomach, which you aren't prepared for. So just make sure you, 
try and look at the bigger picture as well. Yeah, well, we've armed you with a lot of information today. So best of luck for your next triathlon and nailing your nutrition for that triathlon. And if anyone out there does fancy a little high school experiment and burning some gels to see if they <laughs> do Tempted. have as many calories in them as they state, then we'd love to hear your results on that. And yeah, we hope you've enjoyed today's video. So please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe just down below.